What's going on everybody, it's E. Mackey and today's topic of discussion is color theory and the psychology of color in marketing. If I were to ask you, what is black, what would you say? If you said anything other than beautiful, you're wrong, cause black is beautiful. But no, for real though, black is the absence or complete absorption of light. It's what's known as achromatic, a color without hue. Now the average person sees about 10 million colors. Think about that, 10 million colors. And that's probably strange to you because you're probably sitting there wondering, how is it 10 million colors? And the reason why you don't really have a really good perception of 10 million colors is because we don't have a name for those 10 million colors. In fact, for much of history, people didn't really have names for any color. The only way that they had to describe color was light and dark. And this was true for like millions of years. As a matter of fact, it's believed that red is the first color to actually have a name. That's probably because red was the first color that was actually used in prehistoric time. It was the first pigment that was discovered. Now, you might not realize it, but what I said about us not having names for colors really makes a difference because it's thought that the more names that you have to describe colors, the more colors you can actually perceive. Take a look at this screen. How many colors do you see? If you grew up in the West, you probably tell me there's one color here, but it's actually two. Now in Western culture, we have a hard time differentiating between the two different shades of green here because we don't have that many words to describe the color green. But the Himba tribe in Namibia does. They have several different names to describe different shades of green. So when they see this exact same image, they have no problem whatsoever looking at it and being able to tell the difference in color at a glance. Okay, can you point one more time towards the different color? Very good. So you see in this particular trial, this green patch looks very much like the other ones, at least to me and I think to most other Westerners. Whereas for the Himba, this is a different color. Well, a diff there is, they have a different word for this type of green compared to the other types of green. And that allows them to, to, to more easily distinguish between these two colors when they're next to each other. If I were to show you this image, could you tell me how many different colors are there? Two. It's easy, it's simple, because we have a word for blue and we have a word for green. But when the same image was shown to the people of the Himba tribe, they struggled to see the difference. And this was because they don't have a word for the color blue. The difference between the, 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 the two categories of color is very close to each other. For us, it's quite clear the one that is different, but for them, they have to, to look very hard. Now seeing these examples should clearly illustrate to you how powerful psychology is in our perceptions of color and how much color influences our psychology. So in 1810, a German poet by the name of Johann Wolfgang von Goethe wrote a book called Theory of Colors. So in this book, he breaks down how color is perceived under different circumstances and he breaks down different phenomena like colored shadows, refraction, and chromatic aberration. But one of the most important contributions that he made with this book was his interpretation of the color wheel. All right, so you might remember from elementary school art class that there are three primary colors. Those are yellow, blue, and red. And you might also remember that these colors can't be created by mixing any colors together. But every color can be made by mixing some combination of these three colors together. When we combine any two of these three colors, we get what's known as secondary colors. From combining secondary colors, we get what's known as tertiary colors. And when we combine tertiary colors, we get what's known as the color wheel. Now, if you really understand the color wheel and how it works, it can be an extremely powerful tool that you can use in both art and marketing. But before I go into explaining how the color wheel works, I wanna take a little bit of time to explain more about what color is and how color actually works. Now, a hue is a natural color that's unaffected by tints or shades. Basically, all a hue is, is color. Now, tints are what we get when we add white to a color. And most people think that by adding white, you make the color lighter. 
What's really happening is you're making the color less intense. Shades are what we get when we add black to a color. That's real easy to remember. Everybody knows when you add black to a color, you make it darker, you give it more shade. Tones are what we get when we add gray to a color. And finally, saturation is when tint, shade, and tone are all adjusted at once. Now that brings us to the color wheel. If you take a look at the color wheel, you might notice that the color wheel is divided into two sections. Those are warm colors and cool colors. Now when we begin to start using the different colors on the color wheel and pairing them together, these pairs are called color harmonies. The color wheel is a powerful tool because it can guide us as to what colors to use to create harmonies. Now there are several different harmonies that can be created by mixing different combinations of colors, but we're only gonna discuss three for the purpose of this video. Now the first of the three are complementary colors. Now complementary colors are colors that are on exact opposite sides of the color wheel and it's probably the most commonly used of all the color harmonies. And probably the most popular use of complementary colors are pink and teal. We see pink and teal everywhere. You might not have ever noticed it, but it's in like almost every movie, every super dope like nature Instagram photo that you see, pink and teal are almost everywhere. The next color harmony that we're gonna discuss are analogous colors. And these are basically colors that are side by side on the color wheel. Some examples of analogous colors are what you see here. Now the third example of color harmonies would be monochromatic colors. And this is when you have one hue with different shades, tones, and tints. The most common monochromatic color that we see is black and white, but it doesn't have to be black and white. Remember, monochromatic color harmonies are anytime you have one hue or color with different shades, tones, or tints. Some other examples of color harmonies are triadic, split complementary, tetrodic, and square. So it's important to understand that color and the psychological effects that it has on us are largely dependent on our culture. Now marketing companies have become experts in exploiting that psychological connection that we have in our culture and they've been doing it for years and we didn't even realize it. Have you ever thought about how often the colors red and yellow are used in fast food advertising? Like really think about that. How many brands can you think of right now that have yellow and red in their advertisement? At first thought, you probably can't think of that many right off hand. But if I show you this, it becomes super clear that these brands knew something about the colors yellow and red that we just did. Without seeing all these logos on one page, would you have ever realized that all these brands use the same exact color in their marketing? Probably not. This marketing was done so well that you didn't even realize it was being done to you. But the fact that all of these brands use the same colors means that they obviously understood something about color and the psychology that you didn't. But there must be a reason why they use the yellow and red. Now this chart illustrates how color is used in marketing to influence how you interact with a brand and what you think about that brand. Now once a brand has identified the color that they are going to associate themselves with and the emotions that they want to bring up in you, they will continually reinforce these colors over and over and over and you might not even realize it. Notice where that Nike logo is. Notice the color. It's in the monochrome area, the gray area, the black and white area. That was by design. It's not a coincidence that the Nike logo is in black and white and the majority of their advertisements are in black and white as well. Hopefully I've given you enough information on how color works, how we perceive color, and some basic ideas of what color represents and what it means to us. Thank you so much again for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate you guys and I appreciate all the continued love and support that you guys have given me. Tag somebody that you think can use the information in this video and if you'd like to share this video, feel free, shoot me a DM and I'll get you the files that you can share it in high definition. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate the support. Take care everybody.